What's up everybody? In this video, we will implement a feature where everybody can see who is transferring money to each other. So basically, we will have an open ledger within the bank system of the game uh, where everybody can see what's going on. So to implement that, we start with the data model. We go to schema.drizzle and here we will implement a new database table for bank transfers. So we'll just call it bank transfers and this one is quite simple. It's a MySQL table, call it bank transfers. And then it's just a sender ID. This looks right, a receiver ID. So these are the user ideas for who sent the money, who did they send the money to. Then we have an amount, which is an integer and a created at which is a timestamp and i think we need to copy it from one of the others so that we get a default timestamp as per usual this and we need to put in a few indexes on it as well uh yes looks right sender index Receiver index. And I think Copilot almost did this exactly the way we want. So that's perfect. Then we also need to input some relations to this. So basically here we have a user ID and a user ID and we want to be able to extract the usernames as well. So we'll do export const bank transfer relations. And that's a relations. Bank transfer, we need one, that's true. And probably Copilot did this right as well. So bank transfer sender ID, receiver ID, that looks right. So I think that looks good. We will do a make db push to push this to the database. Let's see if it goes through. Perfect. And then we will restart the app container just so we're sure all the types and everything works. And that's it for the database model. The next thing we will implement then is the router or the backend. So let's go to bank.ts in routers. And I think probably the very first thing we need to do is to implement here. Whenever a user does a transfer, we need to lock it into that system. So we can do that alongside this query. We can do a promise.all. So we await that query and another one. And the second one, uh, now we then need to import that table. Our schema, bank, trends, plus. Um, so we import that and this one has to be updated. So here we do insert into bank transfers from to amount. And this was almost right, so it's the sender ID and receiver ID. Let's see if it keeps complaining about this. Isn't that what we call the fields? Sender ID and receiver ID. Maybe it just needs a little bit of time. Yes. So now whenever we do a transfer, it should be locked into this table. Then we need a new endpoint for retrieving transfers. So we'll call that just get transfers. It will only be for locked in users. So it's a protected procedure. The input should not be empty. Um, it should for sure have a sender ID, which is a string, an optional string, which is nullable, and a receiver ID that output I don't think we need to add code let's see what copilot comes up with here mm, not too bad but not exactly what we want why is it complaining about that one anyways this query has to be a <coughs> paginated infinite pagination because it might return quite a lot of results. So we'll go look at some other infinite pagination query we have. Let's go to 
profile backend router. That's already here for one of those I've done previously. So it needs to take a cursor and a limit to basically see how far it's paginated into the query. We add that. And then these two lines are always the same. They just get the cursor and the limit. Then we need to input these two, always the same as well for these paginated queries. And I guess we need to rewrite this one a little bit. Let's just write it from scratch. So we do query bank transfers find many. Then it needs those two. And at the end, we always do this as well. And here, users has to be replaced with transfers, like that. So that's the basis for one of these paginated uh, queries. Then what we need to do is add a where statement. And in this case, it, I think it has to be an or statement we need. So we will do or. And then we check if we have a sender ID. If we do, then we do an equal sender ID, sender ID, otherwise undefined. And the same for receiver. I think this is the right syntax. Let's see if it, uh, yeah. Yes, that worked, perfect. Is that it? I guess we also have to actually get the usernames because right now we're just getting the sender ID and receiver IDs and we want the actual usernames. So let's do sender true and receiver true. But we also don't want to get the entire user object. So we'll do like this. Let's say we only want to fetch the username true. So now the outcome of this should be, we of course get those. Yeah, so that's perfect. I think that is it for the endpoints. Otherwise we can get back to it. So now we just need to make the front end. We go to bank.tsx. <coughs> and then I think Oh, a sensible thing to do would be to break out each of these boxes to its own component. But for now, I think we will just add it beneath. Then there will be some refactoring later, but uh, I guess that's fine. We will call this one bank transfers or bank ledger. Uh, we call search historical actions or something like that and then how should this one look i guess we need two user select buttons like these guys yeah right now it doesn't work because we have to but basically we should have two of these next to each other or uh, let's do them on top of each other maybe <coughs> um so we removed the input field we don't need that anymore then we need two of these. Uh, I guess we can say they are not inline anymore either. Mm, then we need two new of these guys. Yeah, we really need to break this up into several components, but uh, for now. Find search, yeah, we'll do user search for a ledger, send, so we do each one. Basically, it's just copying this one. So this is uh, from, we do from, we put from here, there, user from. And then we have one for receiver. Rename all these to two. And then we need to plug these in down here. From two. 
Mm, I guess that's everything for those two to work. Let's see. Test user. Yeah. I guess here we actually want to be able to search our own user as well. So we should probably set this to true. But we don't have any pre-selected. Yes, <clears throat> so I think that is probably fine. Next up, we need to do the get the table. Maybe we should have a small notice down here just to make it clear that this is actually intentional. You can see other people's stuff. So we'll do note all transactions in say G R A. Let's just say they're on a public uh, blockchain it is an advanced society at this point this means all that all transactions public and can just so we have an explanation for why this is that needs a little bit of padding. Let's do P2, let's do italic, and just some small text. Yeah, that looks fine. Good, then the last thing we need is the table. And uh, where do we have a table? Let's copy it from somewhere else. If we go to the use us page, uh, this one, I think we have to import some of this stuff. We need the table component, import that. And I think there's a few more things you need. We need the infinite pagination thing. And we also need that array thing. Those three. I think that's all that's needed. Otherwise, we'll have to get back to it. Then let's copy this entire this part where we're fetching users and modified for our purposes. So we will call this section getting uh, bank transfers. Um, let's call it the ledger. We call it the bank. We call it get transfers, I think. We have a limit and then here we need to put in the input parameters which are those two from our search components receiver id and those two are not needed anymore then let's call this all transfers and the type we get out, well, let's call it uh, just a transfer. That is from the all transfer. So here we have just adjusted all this stuff, basically. It's saying we're missing the last element. I think that's that's just some state we need to set similarly to on the users component. So. State. Use state have not been imported. Copy this one. And it seems like the page is loading again. So that's all good. And it's failing to run that query. Oh, what's it doing? I don't know why Drizzle is doing that, but basically the collation between the user data table and the other tables are not the same. So we will have to put pull up this. Maybe it's good to show how I usually fix this. Now we have a new table here. That's the one we created. And the collation here has basically been set wrong. So we need to set it to the Unicode one. I will investigate at some point why that happens. We refresh. Again, let's see if it actually manages to run this query. It runs it, but 
I don't think it gets anything back because we haven't actually done any transactions, which is fine for now. Let's make the component for showing the transactions first. Ah, maybe maybe we can just do a transaction just to make sure. I'm on the localhost user. Let's send some money to test user. We sent 10. And then let's send 20, 30. So now we have some rows in that database table. And then let's make the table. So we go to the users thing again. Um, it's just a good example of how this table component works. Then we say table component. This just defines which columns we want in the table. So we want a sender and a string, and we don't need the width. We have a and the type needs to come from this. Then we have a receiver. We have an amount and timestamp that is created at date. And it's a date type, I think. I think this might mess up, but let's see. Uh, we copy the table component from users again. We go to bank and we need to just plug it in somewhere. I guess here would be fine. We don't do any links and it's all transfers and not all users. And there's some table here, so that's good. Uh, we are getting an error here. Let's see why. We refresh. Objects are not on rare. Yeah, so that's that's why I said it might mess up. I think that's because the sender right now, if we go to all transfers, the sender is actually an object. So we will need to do a map on this one. We just say entry, entry, and then we do sender is equal to sender user. No. Oh. Entry sender username and the same for receiver. Too many here. So now the type here should be that the sender and receiver are strings by refreshing, and it seems like it's working. So right now, because none of these are set, it goes undefined and just shows everything because it's an or, so that makes sense. But if I do test user, it returns nothing. If I do test user on the receiver, it should return the same. If I do localhost here, it should return everything. If I do some random AI, not returning anything. So that seems to work. Now we can search. Everybody can search to see what everybody else transferred to everybody. So that's good. I think I will commit this and then it should be live in a few minutes. Thank you guys for watching and looking forward to the next video. Bye.